It's my morning radio DJ voice. <laughs> Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of... They're doing the street cleaning outside my office today, so if you hear this... Uh, it's because the street cleaners are going by. But uh, they've been doing it for a while, and I've got videos to make. So deal with it! You know what else you should deal with? You should get a deal with NordPass today's sponsors. There's a summer kickoff sale. Get 70% off NordPass at nordpass.com forward slash blaze. Or just use the code blaze. Plus, an additional month for free. What, what? Brilliant. NordPass. More about them in a bit. For now, we're talking about more marketing promotions gone wrong. <sighs> What's this, Simon? Is this a business blaze actually about business? Thank you, Danny, for putting this together. Communists versus the Big Mac. Because, of course, this business plays, where would we be without a little communism? Also, if you'd like to see my entire family get killed by communists, uh, well, on Fridays, the last Friday, in fact, this is going to be completely irrelevant because this video is going out in June. <laughs> uh, sometimes I play video games on this channel. We play Papers, Please. Uh, it's a video game where the communists kill your family. It's a right laugh. I mean, other than all the deaths and communism and, and stuff like that, they, my family literally starved to death. It was, it was horrible. But yes, check that out! Why not, eh? Don't skip all those videos. Don't be like, oh, I'm not here to watch games. Be like, you give those games a go. You watch me play those games. Be like, Simon, watching people play video games is stupid. Yeah, well, why don't you become more stupid then? Huh? Answer me that. Answer me that! Let's take a moment to explore some of the greatest achievements that have emerged from the Soviet Union. <laughs> Oh, Danny, I saw your tweet about this. Danny was like, tell me about some good things from the Soviet Union. I just replied, YouTube views. <laughs> it's not all doom and gloom and regret and tears. They invented Tetris, underwater welding, the theremin. If you ever feel grateful for not living under a Nazi regime, consider thanking the Soviet Union who lost the greatest number of casualties to the fight against Hitler. Yeah, this is true. Like in the UK, we're all like, oh yeah, Second World War, us versus the Germans. And you talk to a Russian, they're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> it was us against Germany, and you play side character. And it's like, then you look at the casualties and you're like, well, yeah, kinda, kinda, yeah, yeah, thanks. <laughs> and the Soviet space program was quite impressive, even if the early days involved finding stray dogs on the street and sending them on a one-way ticket into space. And the Soviet Union were pretty good at sport too. From the 1950 onwards, they regularly topped the Summer Olympic medal tables, trouncing the global competition and showing the Western capitalist pigs who were fat on Coca-Cola exactly how it should be done. When you drink some vodka, you make honor to Russia. When you drink Coca-Cola, you're from fucking America. Lighter man makes better pole jump. <laughs> he just be fed protein from rats. <laughs> I'm gonna stop it. I'm gonna stop it. Great Britain didn't have a great track record at the Olympics in the latter half of the 20th century, but that's probably because at school we were still placing far too much emphasis on the sack race, egg and spoon race, and the three-legged race. Yeah, I don't know, is this just a British thing? But we have these ridiculous sports days where you have to do like activities like this, like you run along and there's a spoon, and you gotta keep an egg on it, and you gotta go, and if it falls off, you lose. But you've got, it's so dumb. It's so, why are we doing this? Why don't we have actual focus on real sports? Like, fighting. It's like, I just want to see all that shit. Let's just set up an octagon and have the kids go at each other. It'll burn off all that energy. They'll sleep brilliantly. There'll be minimal fractured orbital sockets. I'm the cool dad. That's, that's my thing. And these events have still inexplicably failed to make the Olympic arena. But the United States gave the Soviets a good run for their money in what was usually a two-horse race to get to the top of the medal table. And in 1984, the US must have been in a particularly celebratory mood when the Summer Olympics returned to Los Angeles for the first time in over 40 years, not least because the US had endured a longer wait than usual to participate after leading a 66-country boycott on the previous 1980 Olympics held in Moscow. In protest of Soviet warfare in Afghanistan, McDonald's decided to join in the jubilant atmosphere in 1984 by slapping the reassuredly dirty Big Mac right over the Olympic schedule. What is going- what do you mean, slapping a dirty Big Mac? I have no idea what that sentence means, but let's just carry on! On my other channel, sometimes I'll read a sentence and I'll be like, that is way too big brain for me. I'll be like, hope it's correct. Moving on. <laughs> facts boy gets back to the facts. I'm Ron Burgundy. I thought it was a joke! I even wrote it down in my diary! 
With every purchase made at McDonald's over the course of the Los Angeles Olympics, customers were given a scratch card which revealed the name of a particular event. If the U.S. won a bronze medal in that event, the customer won a free soft drink. If the U.S. won a silver medal, you got free french fries. And if the U.S. won a gold medal, you walked away with a free Big Mac. That actually sounds awesome. I love McDonald's. It sounded like a pretty good idea to unify American support under the banner of when the U.S. wins, you win and place McDonald's right at the heart of the national spectacle. This is... Uh, I I don't know how this is going to go wrong. I'd have probably signed off on this. When working out the statistical odds of the promotional deal, there wasn't much point in McDonald's looking back to the previous 1980 Olympics, in which the Soviet Union had utterly dominated the medals table in the, uh, with the lack of any credible competition. So instead, they were more likely to look back a bit further to the 1976 Olympics held in Montreal that year. The US had won a total of 94 medals, including the 34 gold. Not bad, but not quite as impressive as the Soviets, who came top of the table again with a total of 125 medals. Whoa! Ooh, including 49 goals. That is not like, that is not a little bit more impressive. That is, you got trounced, America. And look, don't get me wrong, I'm sure the UK was like rolling around in position like 17 or whatever, with like one gold medal and four medals overall, because whoa, we did the second race with the eggs. If anyone's interested, Great Britain, hey, there we are. Won three gold medals that year. Did I say that? No, I said one gold medal. Uh, one of which was probably for hula hooping or welly wanging or something. Danny and I. Same page. There's that street cleaner. I see you. Thank you. It was really dirty. There's also a car on my street that's clearly been abandoned. Like, it's got one giant flat tire. There's bird shit all over it. And whenever, you know, they put the signs up to say the street cleaner's happening to this day, it's always there. And now there's grass growing underneath it. And I'm like, why does no one come and take this away? <laughs> why? Why? But something was about to mess up this statistical thinking. Three months before the start of the 1984 Olympics, the Soviet Union, along with 13 other Eastern Bloc countries, announced they would be boycotting the event in protest of the boycott of their own previous events. Oh my. So, in the lack of any credible competition, it was the United States' turn to completely clean up at the event, winning a staggering 170 more medals, including 83 goals. That is seriously impressive. Uh, unfortunately for McDonald's, this meant that they were now giving away more free Big Macs than they originally envisioned. It was reported in the press that more than 6,000 branches had completely run out of Big Macs, and while McDonald's never officially admitted how much money it lost from the ill-fated campaign, it's estimated to be in the region of tens of millions of dollars. Excellent. I love it when something like, Oh my god, did you guys hear? I shared this on my Twitter. KFC in, I'm pretty sure it was China, or was it Japan? Maybe it's Japan. And they had some glitch in their app which allowed people to get food for free. Some student found out about it and was like, absolutely. He got like 10 grand's worth of free KFC. And he went to prison. Like, the company that owns McDonald's, like, I don't know, was it Yahoo Foods or something like that? It's not Yahoo. It's got a name like Yahoo, like Wahoo or some shit like that. No one cares. And they were like, they took him to court. And I guess like in China, this was like some sort of fraud crime or whatever. And he went to prison. And I'm like, fuck, this is the sort of exact thing I would do. And then, I, I mean, I'm assuming in the West, I'm not going to go to prison for that shit. But it was also the, like the KFC's parent corporation that took him to court and somehow he ended up in prison. And I'm like, what the fuck sort of justice is that? China or Japan? I don't remember. What? Just get back to the facts, facts boy. But I was like going to have KFC that day and I was like, you know what? I'm going to McDonald's because I like the taste of freedom, KFC, you assholes. I'm sorry, don't punish me, your food is delicious. But don't take people, don't take people to jail when you're, you fucked up with your app, you piece of shit. Allegedly. Fuck you, allegedly. Daddy, chill. Unfortunately for, uh, b -b 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 it was reported in the press that more than 6,600 branches had completely run out of Big Macs, and while McDonald's never officially admitted how much money it lost from the ill fighter campaign, it's estimated to be in the region of tens of... Did I already read... I definitely already read this. Sorry, Sam! Although it's already... Although it's often claimed that McDonald's were caught by surprise by the Soviet withdrawal, they did have three months to tweak the marketing campaign, and they could have arguably predicted that a boycott was on the cards much earlier. But although it may have been a disastrous result for McDonald's, it proved to be good news for the financially struggling families who found themselves in a month-long loop of getting a free meal at McDonald's and receiving another scratch card which had a very favorable chance of leading to the next free meal. Why not just say, you, if you get the meal for free, you don't get a new scratch card? Simple. That is the easiest way to do this. It was like that Yorkshire tea thing that uh, Danny wrote about in a previous one, where it was like, you buy a thing of tea, and inside is a ticket for a new thing of tea. And so people just got free tea forever until they cancelled the campaign. Just don't give away, if it's for free, don't give away another free thing. Obviously, it's not that complicated. What's going on? Could I have a double whammy burger with cheese? You getting this? 
Yes, sir. Still, it's hard to imagine how even the most poverty-stricken families in America might have started to get, get a little bit fed up with eating nothing but McDonald's for a whole month. Just ask that guy from Super Size Me. Meanwhile, following the collapse of the Communist Soviet Union, the 1992 Olympics in Barcelona witnessed one last glorious crowning moment for the unified team, consisting of 12 of the 15 former Soviet republics, before eventually giving way to the United States and China on the medal tables. And before we move on to more mirthful marketing mishaps, I've been asked on Twitter to point out that the Soviet Union also invented the AK-47. The anthrax vaccine. There's an anthrax vaccine. Sh didn't even know. Feminism and tanks with wings. <laughs> You're welcome, the rest of the world. And just before we get into the rest of today's video, let me tell you about something you should be welcome for, and that's today's glorious sponsor, North Pass. Oh my god, what can you do with NordPass? Yes, that is right. You can store all of your passwords in one place. And no, 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 I'm not suggesting, like, right now, I think, well, Simon, <laughs> what I do is I just take the inside of a cereal box and I write all my passwords down on there in one place and I leave it on my desk. Well, you, sir, are a bit of a small brain. If you want to be a big brain, keep all your passwords in one place with NordPass and then it's protected by a master password. So all you have to do is remember that master password and make that one good. Okay, make that one a hard one. Don't forget it. And also, it's not just passwords. You can shop online with these. So you know when you're like, oh God, I have to type in my 16 digit credit card number for a while. <laughs> I used to memorize them. I just used to have one main credit card that I'd use, just memorized all the numbers. But then every four years, they replaced it. So you'll for sake. But now, with NordPass, no more worrying about that. Also, now that I'm an adult, I have more than one card and you're like, oh God, what am I supposed to be paying with? And what was the security code on the back of that one? You're like, ah, oh, for God's sake. What? Just get NordPass, come on! Are you kidding? Uh, password health. Also, we'll check if your passwords are weak, older than 90 days old, or used for several accounts. I mean, I definitely appreciate them when they're like, yeah, 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 this one's really weak. You uh, should change this. Generate. They'll generate a new one for you. But when they're like, it's 90 days old, I'm like, bro, I'm sorry, but do you really expect me to change all of my passwords every three days, every three months? <laughs> Let's be realistic, shall we? <laughs> They're gonna be like, Simon, take that out. Uh, stay safe online. NordPass recognizes suspicious websites so you don't accidentally reveal your sensitive information. That's a good idea. Data breach scanner. That's good. If you, you know, you don't want to find out that, you know, your credit card information has been leaked online by looking at your credit card statement. It's like, oh my God. Did I really buy 17 memberships to Bang Bros? <laughs> Do not create controversial or offensive content. <laughs> There's a big don't section here. Ah! Ah! <laughs> yes, my dudes. My fellow legends, what must you do? Take advantage of the summer kickoff sale. 70% off NordPass at nordpass.com forward slash blaze or use code blaze. Plus you get an additional month for free. I don't know what accent I'm doing there. It's sort of like half Russian, half Arnold Schwarzenegger. I don't know what I'm doing with my life. Let's get back into the video. Thank you, NordPass. Mwah. Let's see how they like that. <laughs> Home run. Not so long ago, down in the blazement. I like that that is catching on. We brushed the cobwebs away from the old Nintendo Wii, which had been sitting neglected in the corner for years, and booted up Wii Sports. And I'd forgotten just how fun this silly but impressive console can be. For the next few hours, I enjoyed a frantic session of baseball with Sam and the other secret prisoner we must never talk about. Danny! And it was a thrilling feeling when anyone hit the ball right out of the park, leading to a five-minute celebratory strut around the blazement in the manner of a peacock. Everyone was after a shiny new Nintendo Wii when it first launched in late 2006. Wow, that was, I was like, that's 15 years ago, sh <laughs> Oh my god. I'm old. And the console was still pretty hard to come by in North America in 2007. So when California radio station KDND ran a wacky contest on there, oh, this is the one where the woman dies because she holds her pee for too long. Ah! Are you, what? <laughs> Are you kidding me? That's a spoiler. <laughs> Morning rave show that year to win a Nintendo Wii. A lot of people were interested in taking part, including 28-year-old Jennifer Strange, who was keen to get her hands on the console for her three children. The contest w went by the charming name of Hold Your Wii for a Wii. The 20 lucky participants were invited to the KDND studio one morning and challenged to drink as much water as they possibly could without going to the bathroom, with the single prize of the Nintendo Wii going to the talented winner who could hold in their Wii for the longest. The hosts of the radio show regularly checked into the contest uh, to give progress reports on how everyone was doing. The contestants had initially been given eight ounce bottles of water to drink at 15 minute intervals. I've got to translate this into something I can actually understand. Because this is like important. Eight 
ounces in sensible units. 236 sensible units. Perfect. Now I understand. That's quite small. Uh, 50 minutes intervals, but some of them gradually began to drop out of the game to make a dash to the nearest restroom. The remaining contestants were given increasingly bigger quantities of water to drink. Not all the radio listeners were impressed with the idea behind the contest. At one point, a shocked nurse called into the show and aired her grievances live on air, pointing out the guests could be endangering their lives and putting themselves at risk of water intoxication. The DJ didn't seem to share the nurse's concern, though. <laughs> Hi, I'm Radio Mike, and now we're at 404 in the morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome! Hello, you're on live stream. The nurse's like, they're gonna die. Oh yeah, la dee da we find that fascinating. Thank you, next caller, please. It's my morning radio DJ voice. His initial response was, we're aware of that, before he went on to reveal that the contest had all agreed to sign releases, which prevented them from filing a lawsuit if anything went wrong. Then he poked fun at Jennifer Strange, quipping that she'd grown a belly and looked three months pregnant before laughing and asking, is anyone dying in there? Oh my god, it's about to get dark! In fact, Jennifer was doing quite well and had made it down to the last two contestants still standing. Admittedly, some of the contestants, including Jennifer, now started vomiting live in the studio, but the grim determination to win the new console remained fierce. Dude, when you start vomiting because you've drunk too much water, I know you really want that games console, but maybe you shouldn't. Sadly, Jennifer was only destined to take second place after eventually caving into the lure of the bathroom. It's believed that she consumed two gallons of water by this point, and she was complaining of headaches and discomfort. On the plus side, Jennifer won a runner-up prize of a couple of concert tickets. On the downside, just a few hours later, Jennifer Strange will be found dead in her home. On the drive back from the studio, Jennifer had called in sick to work, explaining that she was in extreme pain. Her body was later found in the bathroom of her home in Rancho Cordova. The coroner ruled that Jennifer Strange had died from hypoatremia brought on by excessive water consumption. Assumption. I know she signed this thing that she can't see them. But I get the feeling someone's gonna get sued anyway. John Geary, the vice president and marketing manager for KDND Station's owner, Entercom, told the press that the company was stunned. He said, We're awaiting information that will help explain how this tragic event occurred. The information is what the coroner said. She drank too much water because you told her to, and she died of drinking too much water. That's one investigation that shouldn't have taken too much of his valuable time. Yes. The morning rave show was immediately taken off the air, and 10 KDND employees were fired, including all three hosts of the show. You copy that? You're fired! Although they quickly found new jobs with other broadcasts. You're hired! I mean, it's not gonna be. Did they, I don't think they came up with the idea. It's gonna be like the producers of the show who came up with the idea. And it turns out that despite what the hosts had claimed during the broadcast, the contestants had signed no release, which was protected from, which protected the company from lawsuits. Oh, sh! In 2009, the family of Jennifer Strange was awarded. Oh my good lord. I can see how big this figure is it's got eight figures 16 million five hundred and seventy seven thousand one hundred and eighteen dollars that is very specific from entercom who were found to be 100 percent of fault for negligence while jennifer herself was officially declared to be zero percent at fault uh no no she's a little bit of fault it's definitely entercom's main fault but she bears a little bit of the responsibility here. I know she's dead. The people are be like, Simon, she doesn't! She's dead! Don't speak ill of the dead! And I'll be like, I'm just saying, maybe 10, 20%. That's all right. When KDND's station broadcasting license came up for renewal in 2016, the Federal Communications Commission announced that the situation was under review in light of the tragedy. But although KDND closed down in 2017, this was largely because the owners' intercom couldn't be bothered with the hassle and focused their attention on acquiring CBS radio instead. Without wishing to sound unsympathetic, I'm surprised that Jennifer's own culpability wasn't raised a little higher than zero. Thank you, Danny. Uh, when you find yourself vomiting up drinking from drinking two gallons of water, maybe you should tell yourself it might be time to stop. The Nintendo Wii might be good. Good, but it's not that good. You want to know something? I've never played a Nintendo Wii, as far as I'm aware. Maybe I have, like, but I really have no memory of it. Don't think I've ever played it. Rita Ora drops the mic. I'm sure the name Rita Ora needs no introduction. Or maybe it does. Yes, it definitely does, Danny. You know me. I don't know anyone. And especially, like, I, I'm not massively familiar with the British dance and R&B artist, but then I'm not a 14-year-old girl. Yeah, me neither, Danny. <laughs> Rita Ora. It's like, this isn't one of those people where it's like, oh, yeah, I know the name, but I have no idea what your music is. <laughs> like, um, Taylor Swift. I know who you are. I couldn't name a single one of your songs, and I don't think I've heard the vast majority of them. Rita Ora, I don't even know your name. 
Ah! Since launching her music career in 2012, Rita Ora isn't destined to go down as one of the most prolific artists in history, having only released two albums over the last decade. The Beatles got through 213 songs in the same length of time, but they probably worked harder in the 1960s. Yeah, it's wild how much music the Beatles... Like, good music! And I'm not the craziest Beatles fans ever, Beatles fan ever, but like, they wrote a lot of sh a really small amount of time and it was good. Or well, the sparse nature of output could be put down to the fact that Rita Ora had a finger in a lot of other microwavable pies, including most notably as a celebrity judge on brain numbing drivel such as The Voice, The X Factor, and America's Next Top Model. Never seen any of those shows. I kind of see it like crack not even once. She's not really enjoyed much recognition outside the UK, but with or <laughs> or with I never heard of her. Ah but with a couple of chart shopping singles and one chart shopping album under her belt by 2014. Okay, I feel like maybe I will know one of her songs. Reese clearly felt confident that she'd already earned a bit of mega star clout. But it would it must be quite handy these days when a celebrity name attracts a huge following on social media, as it can lead to cheap and effective marketing shortcuts. You can forget all about those TV and radio promotional appearances or press interviews or massively expensive marketing campaigns. Just drop a single tweet to your millions of devoted followers. And now seeing your latest piece of work is ready for consumption. And the job is done! That's how Simon managed to turn Beers Bla Beard Blaze Oil into a multi billion dollar empire. Thank you, Danny. Not quite, but we're getting there. If you would like some beard oil, I have a beard oil company, BeardBlaze.com, where you can purchase some fantastic beard oil mm, and other beard products and stuff. Please check it out. There's a link below. In Rita's case, though, she decided to be a bit of a tease when she was ready for her latest single in 2014. She announced on Twitter, dropping my new song on Monday if this gets 100,000 retweets. This may sound like a tall order for most Twitter users, but considering that Rita boasted 3.94 million Twitter followers at the time, this wasn't an entirely unrealistic goal. Follow me on Twitter, Simon Whistler. I have m m a lot less. A great, great deal less. But sadly, it looks as if Rita's army of fans weren't quite as devoted as she had imagined. Maybe they just couldn't be asked that day, or maybe they were aggrieved that Rita felt all she had to do was compose a 10-second tweet and then leave all the real marketing work to her fans while she nipped down to the beach bar and casually watched the inevitable marketing explosion on her phone. Some may even perceive it as a mild threat. If you don't get your finger out, I won't treat you to my latest incredible single on, on Monday. You unworthy peasants. <laughs> Peasants! Either way, only a paltry 2,000 fans bothered to click retweet and some 98,000 short of the target. That is terrible. You got like 4 million followers. Rita's sessions at the beach bar must have fell a bit for that. The tweet was deleted just a few hours later. Yes, as she should do. But here's where she made a real pig's ear of thing. Instead of just quietly brushing the humiliating failure under the carpet and hoping that it would eventually become forgotten, Rita decided to go down the tail, curling Rue to pretending that she'd been hacked. She later tweeted, By the way, my Twitter got hacked. Somebody is threatening to release new music I've worked really hard on. Nothing comes out until I'm ready. Luckily, I caught the hacker early and deleted the post. Thank you. You caught the hacker. What did you raid his hacker's den and be like, Hey, I got you, son of a bitch! So I know that's not how it works. And allegedly, you did this yourself and it fell flat. It's okay. It's okay. Just delete it. No one will remember any of this. No one cares. Yes, that really was incredibly lucky. Rita Ora's latest releases over the last few years have failed to match the success of her earlier stuff, but at least she's got 6.6 .6 million followers on Twitter these days. So literally anything could happen from here. She's fine. It's like, I don't know, unless you got some crazy spending habit, you're done. You don't have to work anymore. You're made for life. Don't worry about it. Dub the due. Although if you've had like mega success as an artist, it would be like me in like 10 years when all this shit gone to pieces and I'm just making like YouTube videos for like 400 people to watch. And I'll be like, I mean, I'll, I'll be fine, but it'll be a bit sad. <laughs> Dub the due. Finally, here's yet another reminder that the dumbest thing you can ever possibly do in marketing is to throw a crucial vote wide open to the internet in which users are encouraged to submit any answer they like. Oh my God, we've been here before on business place companies. Don't do this. We already know the sagas involving the naming of Boaty McBoatface <laughs> and the vote for Justin Bieber's next door to be staged in North Korea. But it seems that nobody ever learns their lesson. In 2012, an online campaign was launched to find a name for Mountain Dew's new green apple infused soft drink, which was enticingly described as classic Mountain Dew, but with a green apple attitude. Drinks don't have attitudes, Mountain Dew. Please stop! 
Although the parent company PepsiCo copped most of the flack for this, it was actually a little unfair as the marketing campaign had been set up by one of the smaller customers, Villa Fresh Italian Kitchen. Despite, and yet despite the relatively small scale of the campaign, which went under the title of Dub the Dew, it probably ended up generating more uh, buzz than anything PepsiCo had blown millions of dollars upon that year. Before the contest was hastily pulled, the name Rising High <laughs> at the top of the poll was, I already saw it. <laughs> Hitler did nothing wrong. one in a long time oh my god i got a little tear in my eye holy <laughs> and it together whistle in fact pretty much all of the top, pretty much all of the top 100 names for examples of names that mountain d would never dream of slapping across the packaging of a soft drink other notable entries performing well in the list included moist nuggets silent green <laughs> How have I never heard of this before? This is fucking brilliant. <laughs> ah! Oh my god, okay. It's called diabetes. <laughs> Fat. <laughs> Danny, Danny, mate. Whatever this is, I, all business places should just be this from now on because this is the most glorious sh I've ever seen. Alien Wang on fire and Grammy's gushing apple. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's no surprise that this was most likely the handwork of the notorious internet pranksters 4chan. <laughs> Who for an uncle hacked into the site. Ah, you didn't do enough, did you? Uh, and set up a few rickrolls alongside a new promotional banner saluting Islamic terrorists. This is the best thing I've ever heard of in my life. As the Reddit user Kai Angel, Angel thoughtfully pondered, could you imagine if 4chan put effort into doing something useful? No, this is enough. Just keep doing this. Keep doing this. It's beautiful. PepsiCo swiftly took responsibility by pulling the contest and apologizing for any offense scores, conceding that they had lost to the internet. Yes! But it makes you wonder if companies and organizations and artists will ever heed the wisdom of history. When rapper Pitbull held a Facebook poll where he agreed to perform a concert at any city with a Walmart store, he ended up gritting his teeth and honoring the cheeky winning result by traveling to the most remote possible location in rural Alaska. He did it. Pitbull respect for actually going out there and doing that concert because most people would be like, that. When Greenpeace launched a poll to name an endangered humpback whale well in the South Pacific Ocean, the winning result, again nob nobly honoured, was Mr. Splashy Pants. But on this one, like Greenpeace, what authority do you have to name whales? You don't own the whales, Greenpeace. You're not that important. You're kind of annoying. And when Taylor Swift agreed to put on a performance at whichever school in the US earned the most vote on her website poll, the winning entry was by far the Horace Mann School for the Deaf and Art of Hearing. Danny, this is it just get this is the best intro I've ever read in my life! Although Taylor never made it to the school on the grounds of the concert had been the target of trolling, the school still ended up winning when the artist clubbed together with a few charitable organizations to offer a fifty thousand dollar donation instead. And that's why, Taylor Swift, you're a legend. Like I don't know about you, I don't know your music, but I know that I know many things you do. And you just seem to be a bit, of a, leg a bit of a legend. Respect. But how hard can it really be to implement a few simple vetting procedures so that any potentially offensive or piss-taking entries never made it as far as the shortlist? How about just banning the word Hitler? <laughs> this kind of thing would never have allowed to be in happen in anywhere vaguely sensible, like the communist Soviet Union. And by the way, they also invented the larder car, firefighting sport competitions, two-headed dogs, and boot soup. That's got to be more impressive than the Big Mac. No, Danny, nothing is more impre impressive than the Big Mac. This has been my favorite business place for a while. I hope you enjoyed it as much as me. If you did, you know what to do. You know what to do. Get Nord Pass. There's a link below. Get some beard oil. Get a glorious beard going. And thank you for watching. Beardblaze.com. Let's move on.